Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that, truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon, and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the Word. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rain your heart and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God? Lo, the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests the ministers of the Lord, we let them say, Spare your people, O God, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the people? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. will reward you. And whenever you pray, 
Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that others will see they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. As I left my house to come over here tonight for packing the backpacks for Micah, as I got out into the town center, I was shocked at 10 to 4 that there were already people celebrating Valentine's Day so early. There were fancy dresses and well-dressed men and one man walking clearly to whatever date he was going to with a single balloon with a red heart on a string. And as I passed him, I could see a vase of flowers in his hand. He was going to be with someone he loves. As were about 25 other people that were walking across the street where the valet parking place is right on my way to my house. And then when I got onto the main street, it was backed up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. Now granted, I don't leave that often at that time of day, so I don't know if that's how it always is, but it seemed particularly fancy today. And I thought, because it's Valentine's Day, and we are going out to be with the ones we love. We are sending cards. Do you remember when you were younger, there was protocol to how you sent a valentine. You got red construction paper, and you brought it home, and you folded it in half very gently, and you got a white paper doily, and you glued it on the front. And on the inside, you wrote, I love you. And then you would go to a neighbor's house or someone else, your grandparents' house or something, and you would put it on their front doorstep, ring the bell, and run. But only far enough so you could hide, maybe in the aloe vera tree, so that you could see their face when they came out and opened the card and looked around like, who just left this? Who loves me? So that paired with Ash Wednesday, the journey of our Lenten journey to the cross, to the empty tomb, starts today, where we remember where we came from, that we were brought to life through the very breath of God from the beginning of time, through gathering of dust. And then our finitude will finally happen, and we will return to that dust. So one of the pastors in our conference wrote an article for their newsletter where she talked about this um, Valentine card and what it used to be like before my time. But I thought somebody here might remember that. And her whole question was, who is this one that we gather in worship tonight who loves me so much? It is Jesus. It is God who loves us so much. We get to open that card with every breath we take. 
and know we are loved. Who is it that loves me so much? The one that loves the world so much that he would give his only son to die for us. The one who would overcome the, scar the scariness of death. The one that would overcome and, and come out of a tomb and make it empty. One who would gather his friends on the night before they betrayed him and turned him over to be crucified in the horrible death of crucifixion back in the first century. Who is this God? So tonight, as we put these ashes, as I put these ashes on your forehead and remind you where you came from, the dust of the earth, the very essence of our earth is in us and we are part of it. And so tonight, not only are we reminded of our death, not only are we reminded that God loves us in these profound ways, but we also enter into this season of Lent, which is about inward looking, repenting, making sure that when we ask for forgiveness, we try not to do that same thing again, and to look to Jesus. The one who is the one that loves us that much. So whether you did half your day on Valentine's Day and the other half Ash Wednesday, or if you're still going to celebrate a little Valentine's tonight, the cross on your forehead, when you get home and look in a mirror to wash it off, is the greatest sign of love that we have the sign that we belong to God. We retrace that water or that oil that was put in that spot at your baptism. The covenant between God and God's people is the love that we get to bear witness to with our very lives. And so I also find it fascinating that the gospel, no matter what, um, gospel it's taken out of in what year don't prance around and act like don't don't pray boastfully don't wear fancy clothes don't look dismal if you're fasting all of that and then you leave worship with this big old black cross on your forehead go do in secret so that your father will see you in secret and yet today, with that one little cross on your forehead, we bear witness to the one who loves us so much this night. Welcome to Advent. Advent. Welcome to Lent. Our Lenten journey. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a long day. Um, yeah. Whoops. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are giggles being had to our Facebook and YouTube people out there, just know that. In a moment, we will enter into the ashes being imposed on every person, and then we will share the communion meal together, and that we will sing and we will pray, and we will also leave in silence tonight so that we can be mindful, that we can be introspective, and we can look at how it is we lead our lives. Is some of it out for everyone to see? Yes. Is some of it in our own places where only God and I go? Yes. So during this Lenten season, how will you Find those spaces to be with God. The God who loves you so very much and sends you that Valentine today with every breath you take. I love you. You are my beloved. In you I am well pleased, God says. Amen.
We have shut our ears to the call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetite and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbor, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, our lack of concern for others who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may come up in single file to receive ashes. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, 
Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. You call us to return to you, steadfast God. Renew a right spirit within the church and cleanse the hearts of your people. Strengthen all who proclaim your gospel in word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain your creation, generous God. Supply all that is needed for life to flourish. Protect endangered species and fragile habitats. Teach us to live lightly upon the earth and to honor it as our home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. You seek justice and peace, righteous God. Rebuild cities and homelands devastated by war. Provide welcome, help and safety to refugees. Prosper negotiations that lead to lasting peace among the nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You gather this assembly abiding God. Unite us in serving our neighbors and working for justice. We pray for caregivers and people who are hospitalized, in treatment or recovering from illness, and those whose name we offer now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our heart through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
8. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, all are welcome. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.